The shoulder is a powerful structure. It moves in many directions and allows us to do amazing things. When it hurts, it can be very annoying and reduce our ability to perform simple activities like combing our hair, tying a button on our bag, carrying a purse, or pushing a shopping cart. Today, I will explain what causes shoulder pain and what you can do about it. So, let's talk about the causes of shoulder pain today. If you know someone who has shoulder pain, hit the share button below and send this video to them. Number one, the most common cause of shoulder pain is inflammation of the rotator cuff. This includes impingement syndrome and bursitis. The rotator cuff is a group of tendons to keep the head of the humerus attached to the glenoid. As you see here, the glenoid is this portion of the shoulder where the ball of the humerus sits. It is a very shallow cup. The advantage of being shallow is that it allows the arm to move in many directions. But because it is very shallow, the shoulder is prone to instability or dislocations. In order to protect the shoulder from dislocating, which we call subluxations, the shoulder has a group of tendons and ligaments to keep the head of the humerus in place. This is called the rotator cuff. These tendons can be inflamed by friction, overuse, or aging. We also have pockets of fluid between the tendons and the bones to reduce the friction. They are like cushions. If they get inflamed, they hurt, and we call this bursitis. And one of the main symptoms is when the person raises their arm and they feel an acute sharp pain in the shoulder, which is very typical of a rotator cuff disease. The treatment of rotator cuff disease involves application of ice to reduce inflammation, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or NSAIDs, and exercises to strengthen the muscles around the shoulder. It is important to do range of motion exercises to avoid that the shoulder becomes frozen. Check my video 27 of exercise for shoulder pain. And I also have a video about best sleep positions for people with pain. It's number 70 in my channel. Two, frozen shoulder. It's a rare complication that can occur after a rotator cuff disease, but frozen shoulder could occur without any apparent cause. Sometimes we don't know what causes frozen shoulder. It's a situation where the person loses the movement of the shoulder and it gets stuck like this. It's very painful, especially at night. Sometimes frozen shoulder is caused by other diseases like diabetes, there is decompensated, or even after a heart attack. The treatment of frozen shoulder includes painkillers, injections to the shoulder, and careful, gentle exercises for regaining movements of the shoulder. See my video 58 of exercises for frozen shoulder. A third cause of shoulder pain is three points in the myofascial for myofascial pain syndrome. As you see, there are many muscles around the shoulder. And if they have trigger points, the person may feel pain to the shoulder area. Sometimes on the top of the shoulder, like here in the trapezius area, or in the front of the shoulder, mainly caused by pectoralis muscle trigger points, or in the back of the shoulder, which could be rhomboid muscles or infraspinatus muscles. Watch my video 12 of exercises for myofascial pain of the neck and shoulder muscles, where I demonstrate SSAR exercises for this condition. Fourth, a fourth type of uh, shoulder pain is caused by arthritis. Arthritis is the word that we use when there is an inflammation inside of the joint. Everything that I mentioned above are things that occur outside of the shoulder joint. Rotator cuff involves the tendons outside of the joint. Frozen shoulder involves the capsule of the shoulder. We call it adhesive capsulitis. Myofascial pain affects the muscles around the shoulder joint. 
but arthritis occurs inside of the joint. The joint is surrounded by the capsule and it is this space that contains synovial fluid. Inside the joint, we see the bones and the, they are covered by this thin layer of cartilage. There are many diseases that can cause arthritis. A person with arthritis feels pain in the joint, but they also have other symptoms like stiffness, especially in the morning. There is swelling of the joint due to increased production of synovial fluid, and there is redness around the joint, which is hard to see in the shoulder, but sometimes we can see other joints inflamed, like the fingers, toes, or the knees. Examples of diseases that cause arthritis are rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, gout, ankylosing spondylitis, and osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis is a type of slow, low-grade inflammation, and it causes damage to the cartilage over a prolonged period. It may affect other joints of the body, like hands, feet, knees, ankles, neck, and the lower back. The treatment for arthritis varies depending on what is the cause. For example, gout is an accumulation of crystals inside the joint, which makes the immune system to attack the crystals, which in turn also cause destruction of the cartilage itself. So the treatment involves reducing the number of crystals that are produced and also the use of potent anti-inflammatories to reduce the inflammation, the inflammatory response. Watch my other video about gout. It's number 82. The treatment for rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, and ankylosing spondylitis involves medications that reduce the inflammatory response, like NSAIDs, steroids, and other medications. I advise the person to see a rheumatologist who is a doctor specialized in arthritis. The treatment for arthritis includes the strategies to reduce the chronic, low-grade inflammation. It's important to stick to an anti-inflammatory diet, keep moving and using these joints to maintain lubrication, flexibility, and strength. Also use anti-inflammatories as needed for pain, reduce fat tissue in the body, because there are many pro-inflammatory substances like cytokines and adipokines that are produced in the adipose tissues and they accelerate the osteoarthritis. Watch my other video of anti-inflammatory diet, number 66. What is osteoarthritis, number 112. Morning stiffness, number 134. When the arthritis is very severe and the person loses the movements of the joints, then the person may see a doctor that can apply injections inside the shoulder. This usually includes steroids. Watch my other video about cortisone injections. It's video 84. In some cases, the arthritis is so severe that the person needs to see a surgeon who can do a shoulder replacement surgery. This is like a knee replacement or hip replacement, but in this case, the surgeon replaces the shoulder. Fifth, there are some situations where the person feels pain in the shoulder and even radiation to the arm and hands, but the problem is not in the shoulder. One of these problems is called cervical radiculopathy. This is when there is a pinched nerve in the neck. The person may have neck pain or not, but the main symptoms are neuropathic pain, nerve pain that radiates down the shoulder and arm. This is a different type of pain. It's usually electrical shocks, burning, numbness, tingling, and it may also have muscle weakness and loss of sensations. Check my other video about cervical radiculopathy. It is number 64. Six. If the shoulder pain started after an injury, like a fall, a sports injury, a car accident, or a shoulder dislocation, then the person might need to be immobilized for a period of time. They need to see an orthopedic specialist, and in some cases, they may need surgery to fix the problem. Seven, there are some rare conditions that may also cause shoulder pain, and these include 
bacterial infections, tumors, and bleeding, such as in hemophilia or sickle cell disease. People with Ehlers-Danlos disease may have recurrent dislocations of the shoulder, and this may also be a cause of chronic shoulder pain. Watch my other video about Ehlers-Danlos disease. This is video number 42. Eight, and finally, there are some neurological disorders that affect the shoulder. Examples are stroke, spinal cord injury, multiple sclerosis, and complex regional pain syndrome. I have a video about multiple sclerosis that you can watch. This is number 89. And I also have another video to explain what complex regional pain syndrome is, or CRPS. It is video number nine. When the origin of pain is neuropathic or nerve pain, then the treatment might include medications like antidepressants and anti-epileptic medications. I have a video that I explain the symptoms of neuropathic pain and how it is treated. Check the video number 13. In the case of stroke, the person loses the ability to control the movements of the shoulder and then they develop muscle weakness or muscle spasticity, which is a rigidity of the muscles. They may need special type of physiotherapy, occupational therapy, and if there is spasticity, they may need medications to reduce the muscle spasms. Watch my other video of the 24 exercises for post-stroke shoulder pain. It's video number 40. In summary, it is important that you have a proper diagnosis by a doctor. The doctor uses the following information to make the diagnosis. First, they ask you questions. Depending on the pain characteristics, the doctor will know what you have even without ordering tests. If you want to learn how to explain your pain to your doctor so you can help your doctor to help you, you may watch my other video. That is video number 61 in my channel. Second, the doctor will examine you. A good physical examination after a question period is usually what is necessary to make a proper diagnosis. Third and last, the doctor may or may not order more tests. Sometimes the tests are not necessary and can be completely avoided. Did you know that tests like uh, MRIs, CT scans and ultrasounds are rarely necessary to confirm the diagnosis? They are usually ordered when the doctor needs to perform an injection or surgery or to follow the progression of the disease and have an idea of the severity of the disease. But the diagnosis is best made by taking a good history of the symptoms and by doing a thorough physical examination. The problem is that in many cases, the doctors don't have time to take a good history and do a proper physical exam. So it is easier for them to order some tests. But remember, the tests do not replace the history and physical exam. And a picture of the shoulder may not have all the information that you can take when you talk to the patient and examine the patient. Please remember that this video is intended for educational purposes only. If your shoulder pain is not getting better, then talk to your doctor or your physiotherapist. They should be able to help you to get a individualized treatment that are specific to your problem. If you like this video, don't forget to like it below and write your comments. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.